Urgent as Omsi's reaction, this is the most gangster beverage company on earth, Arizona Tea. This was on the Fat Files. Yeah, the gangster series is back, and I guess it's about tea now. Okay, I thought you Americans didn't like tea that much. You basically drank coffee all the time. I guess that I guess there's a niche for everything. Yeah, India is a big tea country, obviously, because of Britain and things, right? I'm guessing Britain is also like big, uh, you know, a tea thing. But America was mostly coffee, right? Starbucks and things. I don't know. But yeah, tea with a more healthier crowd, I guess. I don't know how it's healthy. But yeah, the green tea, this tea, that tea is becoming bigger. I guess this is one of those. We're the most gangster. Well, I guess it's going to be another uh, episode of like uh, American businessmen being OP with their capitalistic mind figuring shit out. Yeah, I love it whenever I watch something like this, being foreigner, obviously. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. Let's do it. Remember, if you like my next one, don't forget to subscribe so that way I know which type of videos to react to more. Uh, I like watching factories and videos usually because it's like US military. Again, as a foreigner, it's always interesting to see like how um, things are working in America. And like all the military stories are awesome. And now there's like secondary cha channel, which is like in a way more interesting to me because it's like talks about the businesses of today in America. And I like to see how that trickle downs to everywhere because that's how it usually goes. Right? American business slash capitalistic uh, doctrine i don't know how to say that usually is what goes around the world right in india and everywhere that's how they usually operate if any of you american basically come to india and realize like how things are working like wait a minute this is very similar to how we do it yeah because basically people adapt it american business strategy is what world adapts eventually so yeah let's do this one all right this is easily the most requested business for me to look into <laughs> Today we're talking about Arizona tea, and I think the reason so many people have requested this is fairly obvious. Clearly Arizona is up to something, selling these giant cans of tea for 99 cents, which- What the hell? Tea in a can? I mean... I mean, you get cold coffee in a can, right? I don't know, tea in a can? I don't get it. Right out of the gate feels weird but then it gets even weirder when you realize that they've been selling that same can of tea for the same exact price since 1992. Okay, inflation has gone up 124% since then, meaning that if they just wanted to maintain everything, that can of tea should cost at least $2.24. Okay, bear in mind, we live in a world where as of 2021, the Dollar Tree is now the Dollar 25 tree, okay? The only other product that is sacred is the Costco Dollar 50 hot dog. And to make that even kind of feasible, Costco had to go out and buy two hot dog making factories and they still lose money on it, okay? The only reason Costco's staying in business is because they make so much money on all the other things they sell, they can just afford to take a loss on the hot dog, which makes the Arizona tea can absolutely insane because it's the equivalent of- It's not a, it's not a loss. See, I'm a civil contractor. I fill out contracts all the time and I know how like uh, BOQs, right? Like how per item, how you're supposed to like look at things, right? You can't focus on every single item. It's about the broader picture. It's, a, it's about like what you represent and what your services are and like, Sometimes you have to let go of like money in certain places so you can make it in other places. And overall, you make a lot of money. So if Costco like, oh, screw it, like the hot dog is losing us money and like stop doing that. People who like basically is there standing there eating hot dogs like, oh, that looks good. Let's go buy that. Or, okay, maybe I like this. And like with their membership base, right? So I like this. I like eating food. I like buying things here. I'm going to extend my membership or otherwise they would like, I just come here for shopping. I can do that anywhere. If they, if they keep the hot dog, it's not just shopping anymore, is it? So there's like many elements to it, right? It's like investment type of way. Of Costco only selling hot dogs. They have to be losing money. It doesn't even seem feasible. They're clearly up to something and we're going to get into it right after a word from our sponsor. This video is brought to you by Rocket Money, your all-in-one finance app that's going to help you cancel subscriptions, lower your monthly bills, and overall manage your money better. Rocket Money covers pretty much everything. They will let you monitor your credit score. They help you manage your budget by letting you see all of your expenses in one easy location. And then if you want them to, they can actually go in and help negotiate a lower price on some of your bills, like your cell phone, for example. And they don't just save you money by negotiating down some of your bills they also help you identify and cancel a bunch of subscriptions that you probably didn't even know that you had and this is my favorite part because me and my wife mostly my wife has a horrible habit of signing up for free trials on apps and then forgetting to cancel them but luckily rocket money's here to let me know that i've been spending seven nights you sure about that you sure you didn't sign up for some gun store or gun app that you forgot about and getting some kind of like us 
ammo boxes or something that you don't need because it's on like subscription like monthly basis a sure? month, every month for the past three years on some photo editing app that my wife used one time for an instagram post yeah babe what's up um how many guns did you buy this year uh no comment wait what how do you even know i'm talking about you right now did you bug my office a don't worry about it b keep my name out of your mouth Art. All right. All right, I gotta finish the ad, I gotta go. Love you. That could have went better. Anyways, if you wanna take control of your finances today, go check out Rocket Money. I will have a link in the description down below. Let's get back to the video. There's a baby monitor in my office. All right, our story begins with the owner of Arizona T, John Volt. I'm guessing there's the same ad he ran in one of the videos because I remember the same way, baby monitor. Yeah, it could be the same, I don't know. Taggio. In the 1970s, he was a truck driver for an alcohol distribution service. Essentially, he was driving a truck around the city and he would deliver all the alcohol to convenience stores and gas stations. And he did that for years. After doing this for years, him and his- I don't want to pause too much, but uh, isn't that risky? I think any of the goods are risky. I, I still don't process it. Like, uh, alcohol is like to people. Alcohol is like a thing, like commodity. They need that, right? Uh, so people can like basically fast and furious style, not maybe not that glamorous, but still like, won't they basically try to steal that shit? I'm guessing people do keep shotguns there, right? Like the truckers and things. I've seen that. I mean, if you, if you're like a money truck, like you're just trained, you're basically at a soldier level training at that point, right? With the guns and shit. But if you're like alcohol driver and basically that, that kind of thing, like you just have a shotgun, like would you even risk your life at that point? Like, I don't know how many robberies happen with the trucks like that. That's the question, right? And I often wonder this, like, what about India, man? <laughs> that, that are gun, guns are not legal yet. Do, I, I mean, they could get license, right? License is legal. So I don't, I don't know. I have to check it. Like, do t truckers here have license for gun? Because when people just steal that, uh, it's weird. His co-worker, John Farolito, decided they're going to start their own distribution service. However, as I'm sure you can imagine, that's a very tough business to get into. And initially, the only clients that they could get were all the convenience stores and gas stations on the sketchy part of town that nobody else wanted to deliver to. But they did it anyways. Then after they had a fairly successful distribution service, they figured, hey, we're already carrying all these different types of beverages to deliver them to all the convenience stores. And we have those relationships. What if we started our own brewery and started making our own alcoholic beverage? And then we could just have one more product to be able to offer all these clients. So they did, and that was fairly successful also. So now that they have their own alcohol, they have to figure out how to market it. And this is where John Voltaggio really figures out how to market a product. And he looks around at all the other successful products in the alcohol market in the 1980s. And let's just call a spade a spade here. The 1980s is the pinnacle of the sleazy advertisement era, okay? I mean, we've got camels trying to sell children flavored cigarettes, and we've got every alcohol company on the planet desperately trying to convince you that if you drink fucking Bud Light or Coors Light or whatever, I think I don't know if you can like is is remember the like 1920s and shit like they were trying to sell you like cocaine filled cough syrups and shit right and yeah just like things like that I guess they didn't know that but still like is that true like I'm only way that would be true is like I think 1980s like when it started to up for trends of like how global you can go with your business before it was like mostly localized tr trying to like make it like national was like a big deal itself. Yes, 1980s, like, this is when, like, it started to become more international. Other countries, Western countries, slowly in, like, you know, uh, you know, like, moving outside, right? Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, you know, 19, late 1980s and things, that's when they, like, basically tried, Pepsi tried to sell shit to Soviet Union and things. So, yeah, the so advertisement just blew up because the market became much bigger supermodel is going to be attracted to you and your beer gut. So John Voltaggio learning how to market a product. He's like, okay, step one, make it cool. Step two, have a supermodel with huge cans, promote it easy. They then proceed to name their beer Midnight Dragon, which is the coolest fucking name for a beer I've ever heard. And this is in 2024. If you adjust for inflation, it had to have been way cooler back in the 1980s. I mean, even today, that's a brilliant name. Imagine going over to your buddy's house. He opens up the fridge. No, no, no. It was a million time cooler back then because uh, you know like i said the same way how like market be became much bigger same thing with the inter entertainment industry right and over time things that were cooler got used up so much they'd become less cooler and people were like oh isn't that name bit on the nose like who would name their thing a dragon because that's been done why it's been done because it's been done back then back then it was like more like cooler right 
It's like all the shit like all oh, this and that like all in America basically is known for this like having these badass names to shit right over time they used it so much that in today's one in 2024 now right in 21st century it's like oh that's been done too much it's too much on the nose subtlety is the key right back then look at how people used to dress up with the disco and shit and like all the flatty clothes nowadays if somebody wears that like what you what you going fancy dress like wear a gray shirt and like black pant what the fuck is wrong with so subtlety is becoming much bigger nowadays you know like silver mercedes that's the cool thing rather than some like flamboyant car that's how it's becoming right and it's it's turning back again because that's been a thing for past 15 or so years now now i see trends st starting to go towards like more like colorish thing and like you know like trends go back and forth a lot but yeah nowadays like dragon or something like that like isn't that better on the nose but people would do that because of that like uh, yeah subtlety is also becoming too much now like, let's go back to flamboyance but yeah back then it would have been much cooler oh what did you want to drink we've got miller light and midnight dragon dragon i mean at that point you could literally be a miller light guy and you're still gonna try at least one midnight dragon you have to so step one make it cool check step it's not just dragon it's midnight dragon so it's a dragon that chills out in mid midnight drinking beer looking at stars that's what that's cooler Step two, make it sexy, right? Sex sells. I present to you their first ever advertisement, a beer poster of a model in red lingerie holding a 40 of Midnight Dragon with a straw with the caption, I could suck on this all night. Damn! The fact that it's a 40 is just completely outrageous. Like the notion that anyone in the history of mankind has ever been drinking a 40 while simultaneously also concerned about smearing their lipstick is just completely unhinged. Like I need a part two of this beer advertisement. I know that straw doesn't reach the bottom of that 40. What happens when the straw doesn't reach anymore? Do you just throw it away and get another 40? Or are you going to be so drunk off the first 20 ounces you're not going to care about your lipstick anymore? I'm sorry, I'm getting sidetracked. Anyway, so this goes on until like 1990 and John Voltaire while he's delivering beer one day there's another distributor there and he's actually dropping off a bunch of Snapple and John Voltaggio is just like captivated by it because it's the middle of winter why on earth would anybody be drinking iced tea in the middle of winter it doesn't make any sense to him but apparently a bunch of people enjoy it so he's like that's it yeah tea has a certain content in it obviously it's thionine the, which calms you down calms your nervous system down and uh, uh, there are content in it that basically you know boost your metabolism even by a lit a little bit and it just makes you warm up right i drink tea every day in india obviously chai tea whatever right and i can feel that right even though i'm used to high amount of caffeine and like pre-workout and shit so smaller things shouldn't even be noticeable i notice when i drink tea this is this is chai tea right here right so uh, you know whenever i drink it like the, you know like for an hour or so like i feel warmer right uh, it just like metabolism rises and then yeah it's if if you're like in a really cold situation you drink tea yeah that would be that, that was something that you you know like make you really warmed up and shit even in here there's a saying like when there's like rain and monsoon season like really rains uh tea and like fried things is the thing to go right that's the best way i can translate it into english but there you go I'm going to start selling tea. So the first thing Don has to figure out is the proposition, right? Why would anybody drink his tea over Snapple? Snapple's already an established brand. So he starts to thinking on how he's going to set himself different, how he's going to set himself apart, how he's going to be better. Cans? Now, I'm just guessing, but I'm assuming at this point, he refers back to all of his experience, all of his knowledge, all of the lessons that he's learned from marketing and distributing beer over the past decade. And when you distill all that knowledge down, he knows that you have to make it cool and you have to make it sexy, right? Because sex sells. The problem is iced tea isn't exactly an adult beverage there might be a lot of kids drinking this beverage too and having some model with huge cans marketing it might be a little aggressive for something that children might be drinking and then it hits him huge cans we'll get rid of the model and just keep the giant cans okay now like the textbook business term for this strategy is called a value proposition basically he's decided that snapple is 16 ounces and it costs like i don't know a dollar 29 whatever it costs he's coming in and he's like cool i'm gonna sell more i'm gonna sell 23 ounce cans and i'm gonna sell it for less i'm gonna sell it for 99 cents that's the value proposition you're gonna get more for less. Okay, that's what a textbook's gonna tell you, but I'm dubbing this the big can strategy, right? Because we've seen this time and time again, okay? Think about Monster Energy. Monster Energy was not the first energy drink to ever hit the market. That was Red Bull. Monster Energy just came along and was like, oh, hey, Red Bull's only selling these little eight ounce cans of energy drinks. What if I doubled the size and sold 16 ounce cans and gave it an even cooler logo? Boom, multi-billion dollar business right out of the gate. And you know the kicker with that, one of the top executives that helped initially launch Monster and market it 
Schmidt was a top level executive at Arizona previously, so he knew exactly what he was doing with the big can strategy. In Don Voltaggio's own words, his marketing strategy is, and I quote, put tea in a big can and paint it pretty. Okay, if you learn nothing else from this video, just remember, people like big cans. Did you say my name? No, why? You said big cans. Yeah. Well, that was my nickname in high school. <laughs> what? Yeah, I didn't tell you that story. No. Yeah, so it all happened back in 2009. I was a freshman, and so all these boys were just like all up in my face. I'm like... Sorry, what? Are you paying attention? Yeah. No, I heard all of it. Okay. Sorry, anyways, we've got the business model. Classic value proposition, give more for less. Super simple, easy to market, great tried and true business strategy. Next thing, what are we gonna name the company? So Don's thinking on it, he goes back home to his wife and he's looking at his house and he lives in this like Spanish colonial or sometimes referred to as Santa Fe style home. And he's like, cool, I'm just gonna call it Santa Fe tea. When you think of tea, you think of hot, the desert, Santa Fe is perfect. We're gonna slap Santa Fe on the can. He does a couple of designs. The word Santa Fe just, it doesn't look right. It doesn't fit. So he's like, fuck it, I'm just gonna, yeah, the, the naming thing in America, it's just like named after cities, somehow works really well, right? Uh, there's many, even Hyundai does a Santa Fe is a car uh, Hyundai makes, uh, basically named after that, and somehow it sells there as well, right? So when you name after city and like state and things, somehow that sells, so it's like tried and true shit gonna say Arizona tea. Don's never even set foot in Arizona, but he's like, it's fine. We're just gonna call it Arizona tea. It'll be good. Sounds good to me. Okay, next thing. Gotta make the cans cool. Don's wife volunteers. She's gonna design all the cans. Perfect. We got everything we need. So now Don and John Farolito are gonna go to the bank, get a loan, and start their tea company. The bank hates it. They think it's a horrible, stupid idea, but they reluctantly end up giving the loan anyways for a couple of reasons. One, they're already successful businessmen. They already have a ton of money and collateral. And B, sometimes you just gotta bet on the player and not the game. So the bank while they were wrong they ended up making the right decision yeah the, the point of like they're already a business and successful the credit check really matters right because people will take a chance on you even if that whole chance feels stupid because they'll take a chance on you if you're already businessmen because they'll think like oh i'm a fucking banker what do i know about business that much i know about banks i know about statistic but if there is already a successful businessman out there and multiple people together trying to think something they must be onto something even if it feels stupid to me so I've seen people like really screaming about like uh, there are people who go like bankrupt and things like a lot of money wasted, right? People sometimes even like, st you know, like basically uh, runs away, leaving a country, right? And you hear about all these screams like why do banks give money to these people in a large amount but would not give to like, a, you know, like a, some, uh, you know, like with a middle income guy who's trying to do something well. In the end of the day, it's like think about it in psychology way. If, if you're about to give money to somebody who don't, you don't know, right, doesn't have that much like credit check with him, right, it's basically like big ass gamble. But if you're going to give even large amount of money but to somebody who's already established, chances are they're not going to fail or like there's already collateral there type of way. So when you really like think about it in that way, it feels unfair but f to a bank, to somebody who thinks like uh, how to like assess thing, it kind of makes sense and loaned them the money to get started. So 1992, Arizona tea hits the shelves for the first time and pretty much is immediately outrageously successful. And look at the cans, man, this is insane. Why can't we get that here? I mean, this is a tea country, come on, man. Yeah, come on, Arizona, sell it here. It's a global economy now. Too many things get sell in India from like America or something, right? Too many things, like I have to make a list of things. Why not Arizona tea as well? This is like tea, I guess because it's a tea country, like. Are you going to sell something like cheaper than the local competition? Like that's going to be a problem, I guess. I don't know. But yeah, look at that. I'm pretty sure there's no other tea here that like that with the flavors and things in a can and shit. People like can here as well, right? Even if something's cost double, people will buy can. Even I'm one of them, right? Like we, in plastic bottles, you can get double the quantity of like Coke and shit in the same price, but I'm still going to get can because can is better.
immediately outrageously successful. And from here, it's pretty much three decades of Don Voltaggio being a fucking gangster about absolutely everything. Don wakes up one morning, decides he wants to start selling giant one gallon jugs of tea. He starts making the tea, takes it to the distributor. The distributor is like, hey, this is never going to sell. At which point Don is like, cool, you're never right about anything. Go ahead and put it on the shelf anyways. We'll see what happens. Now it's in like every grocery store in America. He decides he wants to come out with a new flavor of tea, honey and ginseng green tea. And then he has his wife design this beautiful can, at which point he takes a bunch of criticism like, hey, men are never going to drink that tea because it's a girly colored can, at which point he's like, fine, I'll just sell it to women then. Fast forward a decade later, it's a lime green or like, what is it, aqua green style color? How is that gir girly color? I guess because of the flower and shit. Yeah, ginseng, like it's surprising, right? I'm guessing it's a very small amount of ginseng there because ginseng can be dangerous. I guess it becomes dangerous at really high quantities, like 5 grams plus. Pretty sure it would be in milligrams in this one. Yeah, so ginseng can even have seen the effect of it, right? Uh, it can really raise your, like, uh, you know, like, blood pressure and shit, right? Uh, heart, basically, like, you know, not just blood pressure, but your heart, right? I've seen, like, palpitation and shit happening at higher doses and like, the fuck that. There was a time where, like, okay, testing all things that could help me with, like, energy and, like, workout and shit. Stupid thing. Uh, I, do, I don't take any of those things anymore. Like, no, none of those, like, ginseng or root and all that bullshit. People nowadays take it, right? Testosterone booster. They don't, they're not, they're not going to give you benefit you're thinking of. And it's just, like, side effect must, probably is going to be much higher. It's their best-selling flavor and probably one of the most iconic product designs of all time. And it's all because he had his wife's back like a complete badass. He would also get a bunch of shit because he wasn't doing any marketing. Like, he had no marketing department whatsoever. To the point that whenever companies or interviewers or news sources would ask, you know, hey, how big is your marketing department? He would reply, pretty big. About 6'8", in fact, referring to himself because he was the only guy that did any marketing, which honestly wasn't much. They weren't worried about product placements and being a Super Bowl commercial and all this other dumb shit that all the other brands do because Don knew that he had the value proposition on his side. He knew that he was selling more tea for less and he was putting it inside of a cool can and the product would sell itself and he was absolutely right. Okay, fast forward to 2008. Arizona tea is huge. They have their own factory. Everything's paid off. They're making a ton of money. They're the number one ready to drink tea brand in the country. At this point, the company is worth over a billion dollars, and John Farolito, who over the past decade has become more and more of a quiet partner as Don just kind of took everything over, and John just got to, you know, reap the rewards, he comes out and he's like, hey, we could literally sell this company and make billions of dollars and just be retired billionaires that wake up and do whatever the fuck we want all day, every day. We should sell the company. To which Don was like, no. Absolutely not. I'm not selling this company because if I sell this company, what are my sons going to do? Both his sons were his top level executives with him, literally his right and left hand man. And he knew that if he sold out, he wasn't going to get to hang out with his sons because every single day, Don Voltaggio has a two hour family style lunch with both of his sons and his wife inside of his big ass office in his factory. Okay, just so we're all on the same page, Don Voltaggio could have cashed out and been a billionaire with a fucking B and said, Nah, I'd rather hang out with my kids. Go fuck yourself. That is the most gangster thing I think I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, imagine how his sons feel about him after that. You know what I mean? Like, imagine going to work with your brother and your dad all day, every day, knowing that the only reason that you're there right now was because your dad got offered to be a billionaire. Like, basically, a king or an emperor of capitalism in America. I mean, this, if he does, like, yes, he could offer billions, but big. You know, there's like a trade-off there. If your company gets bigger and bigger, in the long run, you made less money, right? Selling has its own downfalls, right? And he probably knew like this shit is working, right? Like, you know, like not just family time, like it's a big company. It will get bigger and bigger. Like, I don't want to sell right now. You probably had the numbers. So selling, sure, like you have two billion now, but like what you going to do now, right? It's a finite money. You have to like do something else, start new company. Just like, it's a headache of its own, right? Once you have a good thing going, you don't want to like jump to something else. Even if you're going to jump to something else, this is like uh, basically spend side money and still have your good thing going on, right? Uh, I, I still don't understand people selling something that is already good and working, selling that and just like try to do some other dumb shit and doesn't work out. Like you already a good thing going. I don't understand that. Uh, nobody likes stagnation. Nobody's going to just like sell and just like sit on like a chair in a beach. I am a billionaire now. Because that person would have never become billionaire in the first place. And if that person did become billionaire, he wouldn't have the mentality of, oh, I'm going to chill. 
they have to work the, every rich guy i ever met like who become rich by themselves any guy i ever met right who was always had this like work mentality right i'm a civil contractor i meet with like factory owners and shit who are like really old right like a 60 17 they're like they have more energy than me like okay i'm gonna be here i'm gonna be here like 10 hours a day doing shit i'm like what the fuck right even thinking about it makes me tired so these type of people don't want to just sit at home America, essentially like your dad could have just been like the guy doing whatever he wanted for the rest of his life but no he decided he was going to have your back instead and now you get this awesome job with your family like it's it's dad goals to a degree that I didn't even know existed. So this obviously leads to a little bit of a falling out between Don and John. John obviously wants to sell. He wants to take his money and run, which kind of understandable. So he's like, you know what? Fine, Don, you keep your half of the company. I'm going to take my half and I'm going to go sell it to some investment firm or something. And I'm going to get my money and I'm going to retire. To which John Voltaggio is like, no, you're not. Absolutely not. You are not about to sell half of my company to some investment firm that's going to want to take it public. And then an army of MBAs is going to march in in here and try to tell me how to run my business that I built from the ground up when none of them have accomplished anything at all. Okay, I'm worried about taking care of my employees and my family and putting a lot of tea in pretty cans and these MBAs are going to march in here and they're going to be worried about one thing and that's getting a return on their investment, which is a fancy way of saying they're trying to make money for doing fucking nothing. So Don and John go to court and battle it out for the next eight years. I mean, uh, sell some stake to him, give him the majority. At that point, doesn't matter who you sell to. If you're the majority, you're the one who makes decision. I know there's like certain elements there with the board of directors and things. Even if you're the majority, you still have to listen to your board of directors and things, but you can play around that. If you're the majority, like you can do your thing, like you run the company at that point, you are the main owner, right? I don't know. So, you know, he can sell, sell it like that. Like, okay, if both have like half, like sell 5% more to me and the other 45% you can sell to somebody else. So I have, I'm like majority owner now. They reach a confidential agreement outside of court. Nobody knows what it was. Nobody knows the terms. Nobody really knows what happened. All we know is that John got paid out a billion dollars and now Don Voltaggio owns 100% of Arizona tea as of 2015. So clearly they just paid out a billion dollars. It's been 23 years. They have to raise the price of the tea, right? Absolutely not. Don is 100% against it and he's going to do anything and everything he can to not raise the price of the 99 cent can. What on earth could his reasoning possibly be you know i'm just gonna let him tell you why not increase the price and therefore increase the profit we're successful we're debt free we own everything why have people who are having a hard time paying their rent have to pay more for our drink maybe it's my little way to give back this dude's just a complete gangster i don't know what that's all sounds so like goody and like warm but that's not how big billion com billion dollar companies work in the end, you have to think about numbers. So I'm thinking, like he said, he owns everything, right? Uh, he probably owns all the production and things, so he can do that. And like I said in the earlier video, like there is a mentality behind that. Like sure, like you could make more money uh, by increasing the price. Let's say one one point five dollar or something. You'll make the same money you made like few uh, decade ago or something. But because of the inflation, like rising prices. You're not making the same money right now as you did back then if you kept keep it at 99 cent. But it's becoming like, you know, like economy is getting better and better, right? But people are buying things more compared to 10 years ago. And if you keep at 99 cent, this, that is like unbeatable thing, right? Nobody's going to come close to you. So people are just going to buy your shit. That's it. People who didn't buy your shit before, now they're going to buy your shit. So it's like more people buying things. For like you're moving more product. You'll make more profit just by that. Not to mention, like, if you're moving more products, you can shave off raw material prices here and there because it's just, like, more things are involved now. What else to tell you? That dude literally has woken up every day for the past three decades and just told inflation to go fuck itself. He's literally the only multi-billion dollar CEO that came out and was like, you know what? I'll just make less money. That is completely unprecedented, okay? Like, I love capitalism. I think it is the greatest system that humans have ever come up with. That being said, it's got a ton of shortcomings and it would be so much better if everybody acted like that.
Buh! This is all a complete lie because last time I saw one at the gas station, it was over a dollar. Buh! Yeah, that does happen. That's actually the local store that you're at marking the price up higher than MSRP. Arizona Tea still sells their product below a dollar and recommends that they sell it for 99 cents. If other companies raise it more than that, Arizona can't really do anything about it. So yeah, if you're not picking up what I'm putting down, I'm trying to tell you that your local convenience store is scalping. Yep, I don't understand that MSRP literally means max maximum retail price. Like how can some other shop can just like ask more than that, right? I guess it has to be really special circumstances. Like I see that happening even in here, like much higher than MRP and shit. Like, uh, you know, they're like, okay, we have to like think about like state taxes and this taxes and the price. At that time, it makes sense. But there must be certain criteria like which places MSRP applies because there they can't like really raise the price from that. Helping tea. It's the world we live in. So other than Don simply being willing to just make less money, buy a smaller yacht, if you will, what else is Arizona Tea doing to cut costs to maintain this price point? Over time, they've done quite a few different things, one of which is they actually changed from selling 23 ounce cans to 22 ounce cans. And the reason they did that wasn't by selling, you know, one less ounce of tea is gonna save us all this money. They didn't really give a shit about the tea itself. What they did was they Cheap went to cans. the can manufacturer and said, hey, we want you to make our cans thinner and use 40% less aluminum so that we save a bunch of money on the raw material end. So they actually ended up making the can a tiny bit smaller and then making it significantly thinner all the way around. I think there's more elements to that because in, in the end of the day, raw things like let's just say cans, probably there are very specific companies that just makes cans because I have a friend basically, like I know people who makes uh, bottle caps. You think like what the fuck, but like he's really rich. Like he has like Nissan GTRs, Lamborghinis and shit like that here. And he basically makes bottle casts for a specific type of like bottles that literally everyone use like Coca-Cola, this and that. So a can, let's say a, a monster, like if there is a 22 ounce monster out there, if uh, Arizona is making 23 ounce one, the, you know, like a can company has to specifically make 23 ounce one, which will cost more. But if they make 22 ounces, if they make 22 ounces for some other company as well, it's like mass production. It's going to be cheaper. So shit like that, basically. Even in car manufacturers, right? Different companies like Toyota, Nissan, Honda. You can find similarities there because like the core company, who let's just say make seat covers or like small bolts here and there, basically make for all of them, right? Protein powders in India. There's only one company who basically takes protein powders from Glambia, which is basically the owner of like Optimum Nutrition and like basically distributes to everyone. So basically all protein powders are basically the same. Goes under like locally a bit filters and difference, but raw is the same basically. Things like that and having a different top so that they could save a bunch of money on the can itself. In addition to that, they also figured they could save a bunch of money on fuel by not delivering their tea during the day to all the different stores. All their trucks run exclusively at night. Okay, just so we're all on the same page, just so we're all hearing what I'm saying. In order for Arizona Tea to maintain their cheap price point for the rest of us, they're also going to make us suffer by reducing the amount of traffic. This might be my favorite company on the planet. They need to add that to the marketing, honestly. Big cans, pretty, there's less fucking traffic, okay? It's a trifecta. Can you understand how crazy that is? Like before they were just saving you money, but now in order to keep saving you money- For a billion dollar, multi-billion dollar company, worrying about traffic makes me think like they're really at the edge of things. Like let's really like shave off whenever we can because we have to keep the 99 cent thing, which is like intense. I don't know how long they can do that. They will have to increase prices, I think, because Inflation is rising even crazily. I guess in 2030s, prices points would be really different. I think everybody's gonna uh, go through a certain type of crisis because if everything rises up, it's just that everything inflates at that higher rates, it is gonna cause problems. So somebody will have to figure that out. But yeah, someone something like this, Arizona, they will have to increase the prices one day. Right now, yeah, there's some there's some next level shit, right? Well, logistics basically money they're also being forced to save you time okay it violates the laws of physics somehow it has to damn neil degrasse tyson how are you doing that it's physics terry it's physics this is my new favorite what company okay i don't even drink arizona tea i'm starting today okay that's it that's all i got i thought for by the way uh, neil tyson was like a wrestler in school he was like 200 plus pounder uh, there's like a 
older photos of him where he's like jacked or something right so you don't think about him that way but every time you see him like you know how he's strong he's just like his frame looks like bigger or he's just big boy not really because you don't really lose all of your muscles even if you stop working out once you reach certain threshold you retain certain type of muscles especially if you don't go starving or something so there's still muscles there that's why he has this big frame and shit but yeah that's something right like someone like him being that kind of a big and shit wrestler and things that's weird for sure, Arizona Tea was going to be up to something like every other company I look into, but no, they're not up to anything nefarious. They're not secretly being funded by the government. It's just Don Voltaggio, the owner, woke up every day for 30 years and decided to be a fucking badass. When they told him his one gallon jug of tea idea was dumb and it wasn't going to work, he said, cool, I'm going to go ahead and sell it anyways. And it worked. He believed in himself. When his wife designed this awesome can and they said, nobody's going to buy it because it's girly. He said, cool, I'm going to sell it anyways. He believed in his wife and he was a good husband. Husband. When it came time to sell out, never listens to people if you're like at that level, right? If you're trying to do, if you're making products and you're building factories, you are in rarity. You're like very small percentage of people who can do that. If somebody's telling you you can't do that, you're not the factory owner yourself. You don't know shit. Even if you're like in part of a like a, a cog in a like big machine, like distributor and things, even then you're not at my level because I'm trying to do something you're not doing. So basically when it comes to inno innovation and creativity, like how to, you know, like make decision and how to like have a vision, usually not to listen to people, right? Uh, you know, basically when it comes to like logistics is really important, like he's doing like not keeping 99 cents, that's really important because otherwise he would be just like competing with others, right? At that point, like maybe it will work, maybe it won't, like depends on like who does advertising better. That's not good. So you need to have a unique element. This is that unique element, keeping it cheap retire and be a billionaire he said but then i'm not going to get to hang out with my sons he had his kids back he was a good dad and when the time came to raise prices because everybody else was doing it he said nah I don't need to make more money. I'll just make less. He was a good person. And despite all of that, despite the fact that he did everything wrong and he put money last as the business owner and the guy running the show, he still ended up being a billionaire worth over $6 billion. And more importantly, he gets to have lunch with both of his boys every single day, which is something I don't think any other billionaire can say. And in a lot of ways, that probably makes him the richest man on earth. So in my opinion, that's the key to Arizona T's success. Don't chase the money, chase the goal. The money will come after. Even if the goal is something as simple as putting a lot of tea in a big can and making it pretty. Thank you for watching. Best way to support the channel is go buy some merch over the Fat Nutrition.com. Quack bang out. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go play with some big cans of my own. Anna, what are you doing? Yeah, it's surprising that he owns the whole company as a billionaire because there's a reason people go public. When you go too big, there is a risk element there, right? Uh, if Arizona's tea suddenly sucked for whatever reason and gets bad publicity, you lose all your money and worth. Usually people go public because like people's money at stake. It's not all your like, you're not all in, your chips are not all in. People start to synergize more, right? Uh, make a company public. So you own half, other half is owned by like public and things. You take other, other of your money, invest somebody somewhere else and you just like increase your portfolio. That's how usually companies like, you know, big people like stay safe. Owning something 100% is like risk because if, if it fails, you completely fucked type of way. But I guess he doesn't care about that. He just like, he believes in that. And yeah, uh, yeah, this is really, really different. There is a, you know, Tata basically, right? The owner of Tata, he basically owns Jaguar, Land Rover and things like that. And many other things, right? he basically gave away most of his money and profit to charities like that surprised me when i learned like at his level how rich he is so yeah people like that exist out there who just not just money hungry all the time who does business for business sake and usually they are these people are going to be successful all right well if you like me next time don't forget to subscribe and i'll see you next time